Hi everyone, welcome to SweatPod. I'm Sharifa J, your co-host, and I am joined today by... Erin Dussard. And with us today, we have Dr. Agnes Bryan, who I'm lucky enough to call auntie, and she is joined by Sam Prin. So, Sam Prin, co-founder of Strong Her. Tell me a bit about yourself. What are you doing? You've just said it all. <laughs> hey. uh, so I am a trainer, personal trainer, and co-founder of Strong Her, which is a women's fitness and wellbeing brand. Community, a community of women. Um, and I've been a trainer for about six years, um, coming from a dance background. I'm all about educating women um, in terms of getting to know their bodies, their health, their nutrition, their everything. Okay, so Auntie Agnes Bryan, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Agnes Bryan and um, I'm a psychotherapist and so I've been involved in mental health and social care for over 20 years um, and I've been a psychotherapist for, for 20 years, since 1998. Um, and I'm really, really interested in the whole topic on the relationship between mental health and the physical because my training as a psychotherapist is in Gestalt which believes in whole. Gestalt simply means whole. And it's about the mind, the body, the spirit, and, and morality if people are interested in that as well. So really paying attention to how all the different parts of the body actually connects. And more recently, mm -hmm. I've, I've been very, very interested in nutrition. So I've brought that into the work that I do. So I do a lot of coaching as well around that. Okay. Does your physical appearance represent your mental health? Yep. Yes? I'm not sure if it represents your mental health, but there is a relationship though. Okay. Because it depends on, because there are some, no, I'm not gonna go into the real specialism business, because okay. if, because people who are, who suffers from um, anorexia. Yeah. If you see somebody who's very, very thin, right, who, appears as if, you know, because usually people don't always see them in mm. the gym, because yeah. I've seen them in the gym, right? And I think lots of trainers and some people don't pay attention enough mm. to when somebody's really reached the border yeah. of it, right? And that might gives you, give you a sense that actually something isn't quite right here. It depends on how you see them working out, yeah, it depends yeah. on how often you see them there, and so it, you may not see them looking in the mirror and all of that, but actually, they come in all the time, you don't mm. know what they're just doing secretly. When you look at their physique and you think, hold on a minute, there's a difference between just looking thin mm. or slim mm. and actually, because you can see it in the face, mm. it's drawn, and their hair, and, the, and there's the hair skin. on their yeah. face. I think it's interesting because, so I actually suffered with anorexia. Oh, okay. um, not, I don't now, yeah, yeah. I did uh, anorexia and bulimia, and obviously that that like people knew, like Sharifa actually knew yeah. when in that time and, and people could see that I wasn't well. But then fast forward to now, mm. I'm actually really suffering with my anxiety. And, yeah. and my physical appearance, you wouldn't look at me and go, oh, like there's you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you wouldn't think that there's something yeah. wrong. So it's yeah. like, I think you're right in terms of some mental health. Yeah. Um, you can quite clearly see from physical, but I think that there's other mental health issues that you can't. Yeah, so I mean like, I say that in the sense of like, someone walks in, six pack, abs, really lean, male or female, whatever, they're very lean. Can we automatically say that person must be well, they've got it all together? Or could there be issues underlying where they do have mental health mm. issues, but physically they look peak? But that, you see, that's why I say there is a relationship because mm. you see, I, being the sort of person I am, I would go behind that instantly and I think, hold on a minute. This is, this is too perfect. Mm. This is over. Mm. If it's over, to me it feels like this is over the top. Yeah, right? like you're overcompensating. That you're overcompensating mm. for something. So what is going on that actually you're building yourself to this point where it doesn't look, well to me, mm. it probably then moved from being looking aesthetically nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? And then the person is ups and then it moves it's into a obsession. state of obsession. I've, I've yeah. always thought that. I've always thought when somebody looks absolutely perfect yeah. to conventional standards, but then I've seen them like weighing out their food yes, or absolutely. you know, they're so they're obsessing, they're yeah. in the gym like six times a week. Yeah. I always think that's not healthy. No. Is mm. that that's that healthy to be that obsessed? Or is it just, you know, or I think maybe the argument would be, well, I'm just dedicated, you know, a dedicated love, I love this. Mm. Um, but it's I, funny though, because actually, um, like 
exercise helps with like your mental health yeah. so if, if you're going to the gym quite a lot like you could be actually helping your mental health so it's like it's quite interesting but it's that that's true because as as you know it, it helps to release the tension mm. in the muscles then it really it, it, the endorphins you know yeah, all yeah, of all yeah. of that right so i mean i'm not teaching you to suck yeah, egg, yeah. but you know exactly what it does so it does help with that it does help with the anxiety in terms of releasing some of that but then we also have to look at when it borders on to mm. addiction Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. And having said that, we all have addictive parts mm. of us. Mm -hmm. We all have it. And so some of us might do it in the gym. Mm -hmm. Some of us might do it with the food. Mm. Yeah. But we all have. So there isn't anything to say if somebody's an addict, a drug addict, or whatever it is, that actually we judge them as if they're so bad and so on. As if we are not. We should be saying, therefore, the grace of God, we're not there. Mm -hmm. Right? Because part of what we, me and you, might do, or, you know, is that we kind of know how to attend to it in ourselves, yeah? But there are people who don't know when they've reached the boundary and then they go past mm -hmm. that boundary. So I imagine earlier on when you were saying that you, were, um, you had suffered from anorexia mm. and bulimia, that it's, it's that bit, isn't it? Yeah. It's a way of coping with the anxiety, but actually who was in your life or whatever there to just help you to understand, hold on a minute, yeah. You think you're going a Go too little far, too far. Yeah. 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 And that could only be done in a gently supportive... Because if you don't have those internal resources for yourself to know that, then you then come to people like myself, mm. yeah. <laughs> who are, is a psychotherapist, who might then be able to help you to understand where all of that's come mm. from, how come you got to the point where you now can't regulate your addictive, the addictive part of you, that it's gone too far. Have you come across any clients like that that you've had in the past or oh, yeah, people that yeah. you've looked after that Absolutely. have had, and like you say, have looking physically, conventionally healthy, yeah. but are suffering, really suffering under the surface? Or, I mean, I've had people who've, um, who have been addicted to alcohol and drugs and who've been to rehab and then come into therapy to actually do the work that's below that to deal with the issue that has caused them to get into that state of addiction. And part of what has happened is that they've done the rehab and has actually paid attention to the physical, the physical side of themselves. And so looking quite healthy, goes to the gym, is eating right and so on. But nevertheless, they are in touch with the fact that actually they can go down that slippery slope very fast unless you do the work to understand what was below, what's below the surface? What was the reason that made you think that that, that was the best way to deal with mm. whatever was bothering you? That was the best way to deal with your anxiety. If you don't have the internal resource and you don't have it around you, it's not to judge that person as they've done something wrong, but if you have that, then you could probably be looking at that. So yeah, so I've had people who, yeah, they've come in, they've done all the stuff outside, come out of addiction, right? And is really working at trying to sustain being sober or being, and being healthy and do all the other stuff, right? But can also go back. Mm. It's interesting you talk about addiction though, because I always look at people in fitness spaces and I see, I see the, kind of the amount of, some would call it dedication, yeah. but I know that I'm seeing trainers, personal trainers and stuff, you know, drinking fat burners yeah. and doing these like mm. competitions and weighing their food. And I think, isn't that in itself like a form of illness? Isn't yeah. that in itself a form of addiction? Which is, but for some reason it's being kind of celebrated in society, celebrated yeah. by fitness yeah. brands, mm. and also put in a position where we almost to aspire to this. Mm. And I think that's because of the aesthetic. Because mm. the aesthetic sells, we all, we all like what looks good. So because someone looks good, that's why we celebrate, regardless of regardless of whether they have mental issues or whether mm. they have an addiction, whatever, because mm. they look so good, 
And because we like what looks mm. good, it's aesthetically pleasing. True. That's why we celebrate it. That's like what it, it, in, I think, the 80s or 70s mm. or the 80s when they had campaigns for smoking. Mm. And it was so cool to smoke. It was so fabulous to mm. smoke. And all the adverts, it'd be like this sexy woman mm. and they'd be like, you know, just have a Marlboro Red. <laughs> and they made smoking so sexy mm. and so cool that everyone wanted to do it. But now, obviously, we've changed. Smoking is completely different now. Mm. Smoking is disgusting, it's dirty. And you see actually less people do it it's banned in lots of places um, and it's, it's whatever they make sexy if they made alcoholism mm. sexy if they made you know and they've just made obviously fitness is sexy mm. it can look sexy to us but what if they changed that in the media what if the media showed weighing the food and and having the fat burners and having abs if they changed that narrative so it wasn't sexy anymore so it was it was something to be afraid of it was mm. a addiction that would change the, yeah because I mean, there are two bits to this. And there's, a, there's a political aspect of it, which some of which you're talking about in terms of the, an economic aspect of it, like big industry, mm. yeah. right? So all these, so that, that, that drink, so it's pure sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Pure sugar. But you see people down in it, down in it, but we do need this sugar for yeah, the energy, yes. right? You, yeah. Absolutely, we do. So people don't always understand what they're putting in the body. Mm except what we see on the TV or we see with the big, big adverts. So we have to be mindful that there is a big, big, big industry behind all of this mm. that is maintaining some of that. Mm. Because look like what, if you take smoking, when you talked about smoking, what really changed it a bit, even more so, is when they started, when the government came in and banned it mm. in some of the, in the public places. And so now, even, I mean, now I walked on the street and, it's, it's alien to see people just with a cigarette in their hand. And I mean, and I judge. Mm. I notice that I'm under, so I can smell, she's got mm. a cigarette. Mm. I can smell. That's how I am yeah. now. It's like somebody's got a cigarette. Yeah, yeah? now it's quite rare. Now it's rare. Before. So I can, mm. I can smell that somebody's got a cigarette. Mm. But the other thing that you said, Erin, which I think is, it's a, it's a double-edged sword around it, that the people wanting to look aesthetically good, mm. right? And... Because it does, we get a feedback from it. Yeah. And then there is a mental feedback from it as well. So there is the physical feedback from it, and then there's a mental feedback from it. Because we know the endorphins, we know all of that, mm. whatever. And if we feel good, because I, when I work out and whatever and so on, and if I don't, then I start to feel guilty and all that sort of stuff. And then I go and do it and I feel good about myself. Yeah, yeah. And then you go about the, the, during the day and the world looks good. So there is a reality base to it in terms of the and a chemical base to yeah. it, which is true. And then there's the political aspect of it with some of what you're, mm. you're talking about, yeah? And at the same time, again, the whole thing is about when do we know that we've gone too far? Mm. Mm. So I'm not saying... Get no one's ever going to say, yeah. your abs look too defined. <laughs> Stop defining yeah. them, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, Sam, you said you, you, had, you went for anorexia. How... What was that turning point for you where you, you was able to break out of that? Ooh, I, I get asked this a lot and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I, this is back in uh, when I was a dancer. Okay. And basically everything that I had worked towards, like I had got myself a full scholarship at Performing Arts College mm. and basically I was about to lose everything because I'd pushed myself so far that the dance Was you encouraged was... to, or this is something you've done yourself? As in, as to in... Encouraged to push yourself so far, or...? The thing is, I think that the... I think the performing arts industry doesn't help. Mm. I think that I already had issues. Mm. Um, it was like, you know, I'm not going to go into my story, yeah, yeah. but um, there was like a way of controlling things okay. around me. Yeah. Um, but then the dance industry, and I know Sharifa will understand this, like, it doesn't because there's so much emphasis on, oh, you need to drop weight, and mm. it was things like that, okay. little comments, yeah. and about your appearance, that then that kind of triggered that mm. forward and made that even worse. Well, we went to the same drama school, okay. and I, I remember our good friend Jade, she had stomach flu, and mm. she came into class one day, and she must have dropped like quite a few kilos because she was unwell, mm. and she came into class, and everyone was like, the ballet teacher was like, oh, Jade, you look fantastic. Fantastic, mm. And it was always that, as soon as you dropped weight, you look fantastic. I lost four stone in my first year at drama school. And they would always describe me as, oh, Sharifa, the transformation. Mm. And I was eating one apple a day. Mm. I was starving myself. And 
constantly being congratulated, which is something we do in society mm. so much. Mm. Oh my God, you look skinny. Mm. Yeah. You must wear, you look slim. It's, when did this become such a positive yeah, yeah. thing to say to somebody? I think that somebody. that's why I think it's good that now things are starting to shift in terms of like strong, not skinny. Yeah. Like all of this, these kind of things that are like on social media and, and whatnot and like definitely something that I'm like an advocate for, mm. like taking it away from appearance, like that is becoming more of a thing. So hopefully like in time, this will help people that are kind of going through those things and as you said, like being congratulated for losing weight and that will kind of shift things. Mm. But Sam, isn't it still... But, hmm, but we're still in the same territory still, isn't it? It's because we... Something different happens to the, to the body mm. and we congratulate the person, right? And then we get into the business about weight. So now it's about thinness, mm. okay? And in the fitness world, as you said, it's about being strong mm. and actually um, looking strong, right? So strength is now coming mm. to it. But when you were talking, I was thinking, hold on a minute. You know, and now again, the language of plus size. And I'm thinking, again, why, what's this thing about plus size? Because when I track back to, what was her name? Gina Lola, Lola Brigida, that, that actress. Um, oh, the Italian actress, right? This, the, in, if you think about it, a few years ago in the 60s or even before the 60s, 50s, 40s, 50s and whatever, shapes. Mm. You remember they used to talk about the Coca-Cola bottle, mm, yeah. right? Mm. right? So it was all about that curve, mm. right? Curves was what was, was, was fashionable yeah, yeah. and curves was normal. Right? Then something shifted and we went into when we had Twiggy in the 60s. Yeah. Mm. The and then we had the stick. <laughs> and yeah. then, yeah, and then we had all the drugs, we had whatever, and then people's body was what. So we had a different thing in terms of the body image. And so everybody then wanted to be mm. like that, okay? And then, so then to deal with some of the, what we're talking about in terms of the mental illness and the disturbance with the young people all around that, and to kind of facilitate difference that actually whatever your body looks like, mm. It's okay, mm. and it's okay to be you. We've now moved into, okay, so let's give people something where even if they are, they, they structurally is you know, physically looking bigger and whatever, that it could be okay. So we're still in the territory of defining and redefining mm. what you should look like, right? That would be aesthetically okay. Mm. So who has the right to say to you you're plus size that you're yeah. plus size? Yeah. Or who to has the even right just to say to yeah. you comment that you are yeah. other people's bodies? People yeah. are always talking about other people's bodies and, and giving their opinions Absolutely. on how you look. Who gave you the right to, to comment tell on you. me? Exactly. I'm not commenting on you. Why yeah. are you commenting mm. on me? Yeah. I never understand this. Because the industry also has to mm. be doing it because mm. they're selling the mm. stuff. And with the whole thing around perfectionism, as you can see, I mean, I look at some parents with, when you look at, you were talking about, I'm sorry, I'm talking, you were talking about the way you started with dance and so yeah. on. And, and we start children very, very early, mm. isn't it? And watch what happens with them competitively. When you were doing it, probably wasn't as competitive as it is as now, mm. although it was, yeah. okay? But the, when they're doing the, the, the shows and stuff, the makeup, the this, the that, and they're going to look adultified, mm. right? They've got yeah. to look a particular way. They've got to dress a particular way. The parents are now so much invested, in there yeah. and invested in mm. it and in the person that we lose sight of the child, mm. right? So what do you know? It's like, no, you have to look like this. You've got to be like this. You've got to, you know? And so the child grows up. Nothing else matters but how you look. Mm. We are in a looks obsessed world though. Absolutely. And I think with yeah. Sam, what you do with, um, can you tell us a bit more about Stronger, what you do with yeah, Stronger? Yeah, of course. So uh, like Stronger is a women's fitness brand, um, which basically we're educating and empowering women to actually take back control of their own fitness, nutrition, well-being, as opposed to like, Myself and my best friend slash business partner, we were personal trainers for mm. so long and, and I'm sure as you know, like clients become very reliant on mm. you. And we were like, wait a second, why are you relying on me? Like if I go away on holiday, you're not gonna do anything. Like this is your mm. life, it's your body, it's your health. Mm. Like mm. don't be relying on me. So then we were like, we wanna change this and change what fitness is and what female fitness looks like. And um, actually steering women away from aesthetics mm. because every, mm. every woman comes in through our doors and says I want to drop weight I want to build muscle I want to do this da, 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 da. and it's always about looks mm. and before they know it one month two months three months down the line they say to me or they say to Tig um, 
oh, I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, I want to lift this way. I want to do this. I want to yes. run this marathon. Or And we shift it to like performance-related goals. So we take it away from the aesthetic. That's but, because you're the influence and they're yeah. having that influence. But if your influence was different, if it was like F45 where they're like, transform mm. yourself. And there's all those body transformation pictures mm. of like, this person went from this to this. Like, those the kind camps, of... The boot camps. The bo yeah, those kind of images that we're seeing of the whole idea is mm. that you go somewhere and you change mm. yourself mm. and then you come out this whole new person why do we all, all want to be always want to be a new different person why do yeah. those yeah. television shows like the biggest loser who we know and we know that didn't didn't it's not sustainable yeah. and as well this is the thing as well because people don't tackle like the why are they like for example like people who are obese um mm. why why are they obese? Mm. Don't just tackle the, mm. let's drop you down to be yeah, this size. Yeah. Let's tackle mental. the mental stuff uh, behind it. And I really want to talk about that, like yeah. in, in terms of being obese. So we're talking about, okay, does your physical appearance uh, dictate your mental health? So mm. if, for example, we have someone who is morbidly obese, do you think that that means that person is having a mental struggle? Or do you, when someone can say, Oh, you know, I'm 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 fat. You know, people say I'm fat and happy. You know, mm. do you think that, that they true? really mean that, or do you think that that's that's just a, a cover up? Or mm. what are your thoughts? Because I think this, I really. I mean, know in my that. experience, like I've trained a lot of obese women, um, and in my experience, there's always there's always something underneath. Mm. Like there's always a there's. And I'm not qualified mm. to give that kind of mm. stuff. And I just go like, you need to go and see mm. someone about mm. this and mm. talk talk through it. Um, and that's just my experience. I haven't actually met anyone that's obese that is, is happy. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is happy. Do you think that the um, it's like is it a chicken or the egg kind of situation where the obesity leads to mental health problem, or do you think it's a mental yeah. health problem that leads to obesity? It's both. Mm. Actually, it's very difficult to separate them out like that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not cause and effect in that way, right? But, and, and yes, it is. So it's, it's, so it's yes, it's yes, it's yes, yes and, and, yes and it's no. Yes and no. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, um, but I, I just, let's just, I want to go back to how, what, you, what you said in terms of how people say it, right? Because there is something when people say, I am fat and I'm fine, or I'm, I'm, I'm big and I'm happy. Um, but you, there is a, because there are people who, are comfortable mm. with the weight that they are. And so we also have to accept that there are people who are absolutely comfortable that, because again, what is fat? We have, we are fat. We are, mm. we are meant yeah. to it have. It serves a good yeah. purpose. It serves well. a purpose. Yeah. Me warm. In terms of survival. <laughs> and, there are, and people don't yeah. always understand that. They, I mean, recently I've been doing lots of stuff around nutrition and so on, and I understand now the difference between white fat and brown fat and how one changes into the other, into the body, and when we need it and when we don't need it. And, um, What's a white brown and? Because the white one is just closer a white to brown? the skin. Yeah. Yeah. The white one is just that's closer to the skin, and actually that's what insulates. That's what we, that insulates us, and that's what people want to lose. But actually, our brown fat is quite healthy because it also helps protect the organ and so on. And so the body sometimes changes. So if it moves, it doesn't mean we don't have fat on our body, and we need some fat. Mm. There's and so. And then, so it's on a continuum. And then we have the business about obesity where people are unhealthy. They can hardly walk, they're not eating healthily. Mm. It's affecting their organs, it's affecting the way they, they, they sleep, they so on and so forth. And then it affects their mental health because if, if I'm not looking good, if I'm not feeling good, if I'm not feeling good in myself, mm. and also my joints are hurting and all the other whatever, uh, all of those sorts of stuff, I might get depressed about it. Because mm. right? I will say that like I was, uh, doing some jobs last maybe a year and a half ago um, in Australia mm. and I was flying very regularly from Sydney to Melbourne and probably about three or four times a week I was making this commute mm. from Sydney to Melbourne in Australia and I had gained a bit more weight obviously mm. I am a curvy plus size model anyway mm. but I'd gained a bit more weight and I was going into kind of the size 20 22 category mm. and my joints did feel oh, yeah very sore but mm. what really got me was when I went onto I was on Virgin Airways plane and I went to sit in the seat mm. and I actually didn't fit in the seat mm. very well mm. and that was and I was on my way to a plus size shoot mm. and that was a really horrible moment for me mm. and so I made an effort to lose a bit of weight from there but I went I also went home to see my see my mum and we all went to the fair little fairground thing and she was like you know what mums are like she was like she was like oh 
Oh, nice to see you back from Australia. She's like, we're going to the fair today, but um, I don't know if you'll be able to get on any of the rides because really I had gained a lot of weight. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shut up, mum. Anyway, mm. I did. I sat on one of the rides and the thing wouldn't go down. Yeah. And that was absolutely heartbreaking because mm. I didn't even realize, you know, yeah. I can't even do things mm. that I want to be able to do mm. because I've actually gained, and I made an effort to lose a bit of weight and now I'm back down to a size 16 to 18. But I would say that I was, I felt fine mm. until I realized, and yeah. then I felt really unhappy. And for a couple of months, I did feel really, really sad mm. that yeah. I couldn't just. But prior to that moment, mentally, you didn't feel. I felt fine. Mm. Mentally, I felt fine. But when people started pointing it out and commenting, and then I realized I'm actually limited in what I can do. I can't sit in this seat. I couldn't, mm. it was embarrassing for me to not be able to sit in a, and go to work on the plane. <laughs> I had to like, the lady tried to put the buckle on and everything, oh and it was. God. A very uncomfortable situation. But often that's when that's when people realise that mm. they've crossed they've crossed yeah. the line, and it's almost like that experience sounds as if suddenly you are in, in touch with reality. This mm. is this is. I was living my best real. life. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. I was, I was there. Anyway, I was, I was when you're sweating there, sunny. I was, sunny, right. I was having my snacks, and also my client was wonderful. Yeah, they put yeah. me in a really nice hotel. Yeah. Everything was paid for. I was just, I just didn't, I just didn't realize yeah. until someone said, "You can't fit in that ride," yeah. and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and then I made a change, but but I'm not sure if it's, it was when someone told you. It's actually because when you when said someone you said me, when yeah. you sat. And you couldn't That's work true. up. Yeah. And that, you see, this Psychotherapy is that, 101. <laughs> okay, okay, That's, let's the, go. that's, the, that's <laughs> the difference, you see, because until the person reached the point where they can actually own it, because I could be telling you that all the time. I could be saying to you, but you put in whatever. Yeah, unless, and that's why they always say, go buy your clothes, mm -hmm. right? Because when you put the clothes on, that the clause is not lying. Mm. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> when you know. You know I always feel well. like they're lying. Like, <laughs> you want to put this up. dress on? I yeah. was like, it's just yeah. um, exactly. You said zips a bit stitched right. today. Right. Right. Well, you know. and that's Stitching why they always <laughs> stitchings <laughs> off. Don't go by weight. Yeah. So that's the other that's thing. True. I think there's a whole fallacy around weight. Yeah. Okay. If you put this clothes on and it's not fitting or whatever, and that's why people talk now about burning fat rather than do, don't go on the scale because mm. the scale is going to tell you something else. And you know, I mean, you all know all yeah. about, about this. Well, when you, I was listening to when you said, when you, because even when your mom said, because she saw it and she said, I'm not sure you're going to be able to get into the right. <laughs> you said, no, no, no. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't know nothing. Right. And then I sat down and I was like, exactly. And then when you sat in it and you thought, oh my God, the thing is not clicking. Yeah. And that's when you knew it's time for change. It did change. not click. It's the only thing that clicked was I need was to go the, on a diet. Absolutely. <laughs> and even that wasn't going to work because you know exactly yeah. what you did. Yeah. And, and there's people always say, oh, then I must go on a diet. No. Actually, what you did is you, as you said, you lived your best life a yeah, bit too much. And you overindulged. I did overindulge. So all I do is just scale back on the overindulge. But the thing is, I fit in airplane chairs now. Um, right, although I have are. to say, this, this chair is a little bit weather. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. Um, but I genuinely am happy. Yeah. I am genuinely happy. Mm. I'm not even just telling that to myself. I'm yeah. so happy. Yeah. And I'm obese, I think. Why do you say that? Well, because I am. Because <laughs> I'm size 16 to 18. What, I think told I have. You were obese? Yeah, I think because I've got extra fat in areas. I don't know. I like I technically I, BMI and everything I says mean, that for I am me, technically obese. I think obese. BMI is so, so old-fashioned. Yeah, so yeah. old I mean, it is. there was a time when I was deemed overweight, and that's because I'd put on so much muscle for my height. Oh. So. Um, a lot of sprinters, uh, especially 100 meter sprinters, they're very defined. Yeah. They would be deemed as overweight or obese because they're so heavy for their short for their for their size, basically. Oh. So I would say BMI, BMI is definitely no, not the reading that so I would outdated. go by it's to it's say like whether just someone's to obese. Any of the listeners there, yeah. <laughs> fitness professionals, have told us <laughs> yeah. BMI, BMI is yeah, no, I, I, I never use scrappy. BMI. If anyone okay. ever says to me about their BMI, I'm like, ah, forget it. Yeah, no. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's not outdated in this, the, the, the model and the chart and the stuff is outdated, but the idea of the measurement and because you would still look at the yeah the, I, was, I still measure still I, I measure body that. fat I, yeah, I, I won't yeah, use uh, the BMI yeah because again it doesn't as you said it doesn't, it doesn't take into account yeah. your uh, muscle mass muscle yeah. mass yeah. Right. absolutely but it's not the idea of actually the body blah blah, blah index whatever what's it called the body body mass, body mass index, mass index. Yeah. the notion of it is still 
Yeah, you for your height, you shouldn't be it. a certain yeah. weight. Yeah, I get that, but, yeah. but you have to take into, anyway. yeah, take into. Yeah. Yeah.